Hi, I'm Bob Henderson with GFG Instrumentation. This afternoon I'm going to very briefly go over the procedures for doing a bump test and doing a full calibration on a Micro Four single gas instrument that has been equipped with an HCL that's hydrogen chloride electrochemical sensor. The first thing you'll want to do, of course, is to turn the instrument on. Now normally, before doing a bump test or cal, I like to make sure that the instrument has had a chance to warm up completely. If I have a chance, I like to let it uh, uh, take a full 10 minutes between turning the instrument on and when I actually perform the test or the calibration adjustment. In this case, the instrument has had a chance to uh, warm up while it's been uh, off camera. So um, I'm going to remove the protective boots from the instrument. Uh, you'll notice that I have a calibration, a cylinder of calibration gas. In this case, it's a large refillable cylinder of 10 parts per million HCL calibration gas. The larger the quantity of gas, the less expensive it is. The cost per liter of a large refillable cylinder of gas like this is less than a dollar a liter. So it becomes very much more cost effective if you go with a large cylinder. If you go with a small cylinder, that's okay too, but the cost per liter may be a little bit higher. The calibration adapter is made of Teflon. Make sure when we put the instrument into the adapter that the side of the instrument where the sensor is located is lined up with the side of the Teflon adapter where the gas actually comes in. So what we're going to do is we're going to start out by making sure that the readings of the sensor in fresh air really are 0.0, .0 parts per million. So to do that, I am going to push the down button and the center button at the same time and that will access the service menu. So you can see it now says service. Pushing the down arrow takes you through the available choices. The second choice is auto ZPT. That is the procedure for doing a fresh air zero. To do the zero, all I'm going to do is to press the center button. Now, make sure if you're going to make a fresh air adjustment that you really are in fresh air. You don't want to try to zero the instrument in an area where people are smoking or where you have contaminants that could interfere with the reading. So at this point, the instrument is comparing its current reading to the adjustment target, which is 0.0, .0 parts per million and you'll notice that since it's in the procedure at the moment the display is alternating between HCL and ZPT. When the instrument is done with the procedure the ZPT will go away and you'll be back in the main reading screen which just alternates between HCL and PPM and a reading of zero because we're still in fresh air. The automatic zero adjustment uh, normally takes about 30 seconds and it's done. You can see that ZPT is gone and the message is just HCL rotating between HCL and PPM. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is to expose the sensor in the instrument to a flow of gas. Make sure you're using a regulator that flows at a rate of at least one a uh, liter per minute. And did you notice how quick that was? The alarm in the instrument is set to go off at two parts per million. I am testing the instrument by using 10 ppm test gas. You should hit that alarm within about 15 seconds or less. So at this point, I know the instrument is properly responsive to gas. The alarms are properly um, triggered when the instrument is exposed to gas. That is the speed of response that I expect. Now when we do the span calibration, we're not just looking at how quickly the instrument reaches the alarm. We're actually deliberately giving the instrument enough time for the sensor reading to stabilize 100% at its final stable reading. And the way that it works for an electrochemical sensor, time to alarm is normally about 15 seconds. 
time to 50% of the final stable reading is about 30 seconds. Time to 90% of the final stable reading is about 70 seconds. But to get to 100% of the final stable reading, that last little bit of change can take another minute and a half. So it might take me anywhere between three minutes and four minutes for the sensor to reach its final stable, 100% final stable value. So at this point, what I'm going to do is to put the instrument back in the service mode. And now I am going to start out by putting it in the AutoCal mode. And I am going to push it one more time and make sure that the uh, concentration that the instrument will be using to adjust the readings matches the 10 ppm concentration that I have in the uh, cylinder of gas. Now you have two choices. You can uh, start the flow of gas and allow the sensor to begin responding before you actually start the procedure or you can go ahead and press the button one more time and begin the actual calibration procedure. So uh, now you'll also notice that I have uh, waited a little bit too long instead of doing I've been talking and the instrument has timed me out. It's not a problem. What I'm going to do is go back to where I was a minute ago in the service mode. I'll press the two buttons when I see service, I will choose the auto cal. Now I will press the center button one more time and it uh, shows me the concentration that it's going to be using. Push it again and the display will begin to rotate between cal and HCL. So it lets me know that uh, it's in the process of making the adjustment. And at this point, you're just going to have to wait a little bit because the instrument will refuse to adjust until it is ready to adjust. And that means we want that reading to get all the way up to a stable T100% value. So you can see the number as it's changing. Um, it's up to 7.9, 8.3. So it's getting there pretty quick, 8.5. As soon as it uh, uh, is ready to be adjusted very quickly, uh, the instrument will go ahead and complete the adjustment, after which time the instrument will return to normal operation. And of course, since we're above the alarm setting, uh, the alarms will be activated until I take it out of the adapter and allow it to uh, stabilize back in fresh air. So I'm up to 9.1. 9.1, it's looking pretty stable, so at this point, uh, 9.3, it's just that last little bit of change now, and as soon as the rate of change drops below uh, the level that indicates to the microprocessor in the instrument that the sensor has reached its maximum, that's when um, we will go ahead and make the adjustment. So, it just made the adjustment, and the procedure is over. And that is absolutely all that there is to uh, doing a full calibration. Now, in normal operation, the instrument is going to stabilize. My readings are coming back down at uh, 3.4, uh, 3.2. Um, and as you know, uh, I mentioned earlier, the low alarm is set at 2.0. So as we drop below 2.0, that's when the alarm will uh, be turned off. So I'm continuing to drop 2.8. And if you want, you can fan the sensor a little bit with fresh air. That will speed up the process. You actually should not blow on the sensor to uh, uh, get it to clear down a little bit more quickly because the moisture in your exhaled breath actually has an effect on the sensor reading. So it's better if you just uh, 
fan the sensor a little bit or give it a few moments and it's in the process of coming down. So I'm at uh, 2.0 and there the alarm is, is now turned off. So that's all there is. Now if you did not succeed in making that auto calibration adjustment, the instrument would show you a CAL error message. CAL ERR. -R. If that happens, normally you have timed out. Uh, in my case, because I'm all, always talking instead of paying attention, um, I've just forgotten to start the adjustment properly or turn the flow of gas on. But if you get a CAL error message, the first thing you want to do is to make sure that the gas is properly set up, that you are using the correct concentration of gas to adjust the instrument, and try again. Normally, nine times out of ten, the second time that you do the calibration, you'll succeed. And that's all there is to it. So thank you very much for the opportunity to take you through the procedures. They're very easy. If you have any questions, please contact GFG Instrumentation here at the factory. Or if you go to our internet site, we have application notes that are posted in the support section that will take you through this procedure step by step in the form of a printed guideline. Thanks very much. Bye-bye. <laughs>